that's, thank, that's, that's, thank you very much. Because, you know, well, it's it, not it, a pity, John. You know, I'm sorry, mate, but you were brought on to talk about a report. You've openly said you're not bothered to read it, but you've jumped to all kinds I mean, of no, conclusions to it. And, you know, I think that's a bit arrogant, to be honest with you. We are, we are, we are going to... We are massively arrogant. Now, and it is time now for our head-to-head. Yep, so a damning report has found that the BBC breached its own editorial guidelines more than 1,500 times during the height of the Israel-Hamas war, which is actually quite impressive in a way, isn't it? The report also found that the corporation massively downplayed Palestinian terrorism whilst presenting Israel as a military aggressor. Well, it's little wonder, given that the BBC's international editor, Jeremy Bowen, was forced to admit that he got it wrong when he suggested that Israel was responsible for the bombing of a Gaza hospital. I think I was measured throughout. I didn't raise to judgment. But you said that building had been flattened. Oh yeah, well I got that wrong because I was looking at the pictures and I, what I could see was a square that appeared to be flaming on all sides. Yeah, I mean, just to add insult to injury, the Beeb still can't bring itself to call Hamas what they are really, which is terrorists. Let's start with the Islamist militant group that carried out this attack. Who are Hamas? But more than a thousand people have now been killed in Israel and Gaza after a massive attack by Hamas militants that began at dawn. Gaza is governed by Hamas, which is designated as a terrorist organization by many governments, including the UK. Hamas wears a lot of hats, doesn't it? It is a militant group, but it's also a political party and an Islamist movement. Yeah, they try to, try to do their best not to call them terrorists, don't they? So it's not I am asking. Has the BBC shown its true colours? Let me know your thoughts, gbnews.com forward slash your say. Tweet me at gbnews while you're there. Go and vote in our poll. Going head to head on this, the former current affairs producer at the BBC is John Mayer and the journalist Angela Epstein. Both of you, thank you very, very much. Angela, I'll come to you first on this. 1,500 breaches, you know, of their editorial guidelines within, I think it's been about 10 months. It's quite impressive in a way, isn't it? Has the BBC shown that it's got an institutional problem with Israel, do you think? Well, it's very hard to be persuaded otherwise. And I say that very regretfully because this is our national broadcaster and they're bound by the charter to deliver impartial um, reportage for us and to, to, de to deliver information that we can trust. It's a brand that's known throughout the world and it has a huge responsibility that goes with that. This was a blistering attack, blistering report rather, produced by uh, Trevor Asserson. He's a, a brilliant lawyer with his with his colleagues. And, and I know there will be arguments to say, well, you know, th maybe this was just one particular piece of research or how did they go about it? Apart from the fact the research itself holds up, you know, very robustly. Um, this is is just the latest in an egregious line of examples of the BBC showing manifest bias. You've shown the Boeing clip. He refuses to apologise. You've had Sir Michael Ellis, the former uh, Attorney General, accusing the BBC of bias. There have been countless examples in BBC Arabic. Um, you've got Gary Lineker, who's on the payroll, who has tweeted with impunity uh, and seems to be invincible where this is concerned. And then there's the very basic stuff like Hamas. They maim, they brutalise, they murder, they Mm. behead, they burn. That's what they did on October 7th. The largest number of Jews were killed in that one day since the Holocaust. What more do you want? Their charter okay. is dedicated to the destruction of Israel and world Jewry. And yet the BBC failed to say its name as it is. So all these things provide a damning dossier. They, they make it very difficult to be persuaded they, otherwise. They, they, they're they not biased. John, I'll bring you in because I do believe that you have a different view. I mean, just looking at the face of it, you know, if... if if we breached editorial guidelines from Ofcom 1,500 times in 10 months, I mean, good grief, can you imagine the clamour? Indeed. Now, Patrick, I'm amazed you don't have rent gob Danny Cohen on tonight, who's written 28 Daily Telegraph articles in the, in the last year about this. Now, look, this is not an objective report. It's a, it's a report by a biased person, and you know what? Oh, nobody's picked it up. It's in the Daily Telegraph yesterday, and nobody's picked it up. So the research can't be that solid, can it? Now, I'm just going to I'll just stop you there for a second because actually we did have the bloke who uh, wrote that report on earlier. This is Trevor Asterson, and yeah. he, um, he 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 was he had it put to him that, that whether or not uh, there was any bias towards the BBC in this. So, so I'll play you what he had to say, and then I'll get you to respond yeah. off the back of it. I think we've got a clip of it coming away very, very shortly now. This is a clip of uh, Trevor Atherin, who was on with Jacob Rees-Mogg a little bit earlier on. He was asked whether or not 
or any uh, bias in this report. There we go. What triggered the report was, was feeling that this story was not being told properly. Um, and so we, I thought, well, I can't take anecdotal evidence of that. I've got to do it in the traditional way, which is methodically going through the evidence and assembling it and then seeing it. It took four months before we could actually start counting. And I was expecting to find um, a, a failure of balance uh, and some impartiality, and I didn't. I found a total failure of balance, a colossal lack of impartiality. And, John, apparently quite a lot of this was done by AI. So, I mean, why do you think it is incredibly biased? So, so what? Now, let's talk about the Gaza war, shall we? Because it is a war. You know, this what? is a bizarre war. Where, where no, no, John, sorry, John, no. Uh, I want you to talk about whether or not the BBC has been institutionally well, you know, biased against Israel. The BBC is not allowed to report it. It cannot go on the front line. It reports from Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And, it, 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 you know, it's not... And it, all, it, all of its material comes from the IDS. So I've watched a lot of BBC. I've watched a lot of Channel 4 News. I've watched a lot of ITV. And I think it's a very proud moment in British, in, in British journalism, what they've done. Mm. They, they've kept themselves very objective. But this right. is a war which they're not allowed to report. This is, you know, this is the first war where, where journalists are not allowed on the front line. Why is that? You know, what, what, what are the Israelis playing at? You know, being anti-Israel or anti this war is not being anti-Semitic. Let's understand right, that. So, John, just to be clear, you are completely dismissing the findings of this report, Yeah. I, well, I haven't, I haven't read the report, but I've read the report, other report. Well, and well, thanks for coming on, John. Great to have you. I mean, you've had all day to. Thank you very much, Patrick. Well, so, well, so, right, John, so, John, A, he hasn't read the report, so that, that for, for some reason... Have you read the whole report? Uh, yes, I have. I have read the report, oh, right. actually. Yeah, give, give me a 30-second summary. What does it say? But, well, it, it, as Patrick said in his introduction, it shows 1,500 breaches of editorial guidelines and, 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 and proper editorial policy. It also shows that there isn't any kind of mechanism by which uh, the neutrality can be approached within the BBC. And it gives many, many egregious examples of, of the disproportionate use of the word genocide uh, in relation to Israel compared to, to Hamas, which is a terrorist organisation. I can go on, but I'm aware that we're short mm. of time. I'm very Absolutely. surprised that, excuse Absolutely. me, I haven't finished. I'm very surprised what? that somebody who worked for the BBC, who was a journalist, will come on this programme to, to state their position without bothering to read the evidence. I think that very poorly reflects I, I, the, uh, the report, nature the of your position. Enough. But more importantly, I would say simply this. Trevor Asserson, um, you know, he's a highly respected lawyer. He's He's got a, a, a very successful law practice. He's worked in, in the UK. Um, there's nothing to be gained by falsifying further. And even right. if you set that aside, over 200 people that work for the BBC signed a letter recently complaining about institutionalised bias within the corporation. Okay. What more do you need to prove that or, there is or, a problem that needs to be addressed? Or, all right, John, I'll, I'll let you come back to that. Yeah, and look, I mean, you know, this report, a bias report by a biased person... But how do you know, John? You've not read it, have you? Nobody, and look, it's interesting that nobody has picked up on it, apart from the Daily Telegraph and Danny Cohen. John, so, you've not, so you've not even read, read it, mate. I mean, the Daily how, important, how important is this? Look, you know, when, when are the Israelis going to allow the Gaza war to be reported properly? When are they going to allow journalists on the front line to get there and see what's happening? They can be, anyway, at, at the moment, I mean, Hamas is in, indulging in propaganda as much... As, as, as the Israelis are, because they can send any old film out and, and pe people show it. Now, th this, is, this is a silent war, and it's an absolute nonsense what the Israelis are doing. Right, John, can, I, can I just say, look, as, as a former current affairs producer yes. at the BBC, right, would it be acceptable, do you think, if a, a member of your staff or a presenter yes. had come on to discuss a report and not read it? I, look, I know what the report says. I read a very long piece in the Daily Telegraph, and I read Danny Cohen's diatribe about it as well. You know, so, so I, you know, I don't need to read it word for word. You know, it, 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 it's what one of. I mean, let's talk about the Gaza War. Let's talk. Being anti-Israeli is not being yeah, anti. Right. I, look, John, John I, we're, 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 we're out of time. Uh, yeah, look, both of you, th that's, thank, that's, thank you very much. Because, you know, well, it's it, not a pity, John, you know, I'm sorry, mate, but you were brought on to talk about a report. You've openly said you're not bothered to read it, but you've jumped to all kinds of conclusions to it. And, you know, I think that's a bit arrogant, to be honest with you. We are, are going to... We are massively arrogant, actually. We're going to have to knock it on the hat. So thank you. Thank you very much, both of you, for your time. That is uh, John Mann, who's former current affairs producer at the BBC, and Angela Epstein, as well, a journalist. So who do you agree with there, although it's...
quite difficult if one side of that debate has decided not to engage, isn't it? But anyway, your verdict is now in. 96% of you think the BBC is uh, anti-Israel, uh, while 4% of you think the BBC is not. 